Okay, so in the glazing process, one of the things that you always need to do when firing at the temperature I fire at is protect some of the bottom of the pot from getting any glaze on it at all. If glaze gets on the very bottom foot ring of the pot, then when you fire it in the final firing, the, the pot will stick to the shelf. So you have to keep this bare, and I do that by putting a wax resist process onto the foot ring. Now this is, um, it, it's a wax resist, but what I've done is I've added um, some alumina to the wax resist. The wax keeps the glaze from sticking, but the alumina is what actually keeps the pot from sticking to the kiln shelf. So I make sure that there's no sharp edges on the clay and like where my signature is on the bottom, that feels really sharp and rough. So I just, I just take a little steel banding strap that I made into a tool and scrape on it and it takes off the rough edges. Um, and so then I'm just going to paint wax around the edge. Now you remember when I was trimming the pot I left a little ridge next to the foot ring and this is where that comes in. The ridge is kind of a guide for me to make a nice even and straight wax line so I, I can just run the edge of the brush along that ridge and it makes a nice neat wax line. Okay, so the wax has to dry before I go any further in the glazing process, so we'll just set that aside for now. Okay, so checking the wax that I put on the bottom of the pot, it looks like it's dry enough to glaze the pot now. Um, I first, in glazing this, this piece, I dip it in a white glaze. Uh, when you're getting the glaze ready, it's kind of a, by experience, what works the best. Uh, you want to have the glaze the right thickness so that it's not too thick and would maybe melt off the pot or uh, as it's firing um, but you don't want it too thin either because you won't get the right color then so I use a very scientific method to determine how thick the glaze should be I stir it with a spoon and I count one two three and the glaze stops moving on the spoon and that's the thickness that I use so, not very scientific but it works for me uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is dip half of this pot in the glaze and then I'll have to let it dry and then I'll dip the other half. So, here we go. And I know to dip it in five times like that. And then while the glaze is still wet, it's very easy to wipe any drips off of this foot ring. So I always clean it up after each, after each dipping. Okay, so we'll let this dry a little bit and then I'll be able to dip the remainder of the pot. Okay, so now I'm ready to dip the other half of the pot. I've only waited maybe about 10 minutes or so. Um, the glaze on the first half is not completely dry, but it's dry enough so that I can handle it and, and not leave fingerprints and stuff like that. So, so now I'll do the other half. And when I do this, what I'm trying to do, you can see there's kind of a wavy line there where the first glaze was. I'm gonna overlap it a little bit. So that makes a little decorative element inside the, the pot that I, that I like. Okay. 
And again, I'll sponge off the excess. And I'm also going to kind of wipe off some of the clay where there's the overlap, just so I know it's not too thick at that overlap spot. Okay, so now that has to dry a little.